continue. I have been shot. I have been shot at. I have the hole in the baby grand piano to prove it. Oh, no, I guess I don't. It was stolen and fixed. I have the scar across my face. I have a missing upper jaw, as I say. You think I was born with all these scars across my face? It took years of living in this violent place, as my father used to say all the time. Boy, you're way too pretty to have an opinion. Oh, what a witty he had. Well, I ain't so pretty no more, and I got an opinion. I have two pins in my face. I have a broken bone in my back. I am not afraid of death. I watched my father being loaded in the body bag. I died when he died in so many ways. As my grandfather's brother and wife, Ralph and Louise Blanche, were hit and killed by a drunk driver in 1968, two days after later, my grandfather's magnificent barn and farm were totally gone by a tornado, which I witnessed. I was outside watching the whole thing. As I ran to my grandmother and mother and told them, there are, was a tornado outside, they said. We're like all of you times. Who read this? A big tornado in Utah? Yes, look it up. In August of 1968, the Standard Examiner has all week long photos and coverage of it on microfilm. As he died when all of this happened, next book, and lived another decade in the motions only. I did in so many ways in the winter and the spring of 2000. I still live, but I love all their work, Roth and Sammy. I hope to be reborn someday soon, but I am not afraid. I will tell the truth, and I will write. I have already written. I have my next few books written and ready to go. I know about the Utah connection of the, the decades. I stood in the old sheds of 30th Street and Grant Avenue, owned by Morris Hanson in 1976. And in 1979, Don Hall, who has thousands of his own frescoes over plaster jobs, many thousands all over New York, northern Utah, he and Morris Hanson. And the old timers knew how impassioned I was with my hawk and trial and talked me into staying in the plaster trade of mine. They would take me onto jobs and show me their skills. I have been in many of the old dead and gone powers of Ogden's homes. I have plastered their ceilings and stuccoed their buildings and talked with them and become friends with them. I did business with them. I will tell their tale. I have lived in their tale. I have, I will tell it in the truth. I am big fan of music. In 1980, when Lennon died, is the night my oldest daughter was conceived, which is ironic, she lives right by the Dakota. For a couple of years then, I was wild, very wild. I did three things in those days. Played baseball every day, the keg leagues, as they were called in Ogden. They were massive, they were beautiful, everyone played. Plastered, always had a keg in the back of my truck. Go ask Bill, who owned Buds on 2nd Street, how many kegs I bought from him. And girls, I had spots I would go right behind the old mill where the old fort was still in ruins. The covered wagons and working mill tools were still there. And the old Becker Brewery the, in the back, in the ruins, there it was there. And me and my girlfriends would go. I had my eyes on the history the whole time from birth. Like Nirvana, like Old Bowie, like Queen, like Van Halen, the Beatles, Pat Benatar, it was your idea, Neil. Tom Petty, Boston, Zance, Led Zeppelin and Fleetwood Mac and Bob Seger and Bruce and Hart and The Who and Supertramp Hudson. But the song and the video I think of every day in the past 11 years now is named by the Goo Goo Dolls. That video is my life. I have become like the faces on the bus and I dream of my father coming back down to see me one more time and talking about the baseball season and the stock market and my daughters. I have to have a favorite number on the track and the roulette wheel 11. My father died on January 11. My best friend, David Lewis, the great quarterback from San Jose. I dropped to the hospital, set Super Bowl Sunday, Sunday, 2004. He's had to go into the vets for a biopsy on his liver. He was in perfect condition, six foot four and fussle muscle. He never came out. The doctor nicked his liver. He bled to death on the table February 11. I fell March 11. The greatest girlfriend I ever had, who almost got me killed a few days later. You got it, her birthday was on. You know, 11-11, Veterans Day. This has got to be said. Wow. I didn't get cancer till after. You know what day they checked me in to the bone marrow transplant center. My daughter's like, you're really not going at 11, 11, 11. For real. I said a few years ago, I am switched to the number eight. Mind that bird, Mark the Bird Fidridge, number 20, the greatest of the greats. My girlfriend at the time called me when I was young in high school. Me, Mark the Bird, because I had some crazy blonde hair everywhere and play baseball with passion like he did. Just nowhere as good as he was. A few days before the derby, he was crushed to death while working on on his farm, on his tractor. I won well over $100,000 that day from chump change. I loved the bird. Even though he commonly beat my team, the bird's Orioles. I have a huge bird lover. Mind that bird when he won the derby a few years ago. Mark the bird Fiji was killed just a few days before. The reason I bet mine that bird was the eight hole and out of respect for the bird. 
and the bloodline, Stormbird, closers. Life is short. I know that that had one of my passion, like my father, they all lived with passion. Mark the Bird Fridgers, David Lewis, Bob Bat, my old Marine gambling partner. He would look at me in my dad's dog tag and say, because I wore them so many times, the DNA, what I did with those dog tags. I love him, even though he is a Hollywood Marine, he would say. My father, Clyde Cooley, Kyle Matz, Bo Bowman, and another of my old gambling horse friends. They helped me out of my dark times of 2000 to 2007. He was 75 and would still commonly fist fight 30 years old. Oh, do I have some crazy stories about him. Bootney, my cousin, Troy Blanche, my cousin, one of the closest people in my entire life, my whole life. He died at 48 years old of a prescription pain medication overdose while I was working on the Masonic Temple. Like thousands of Utahns have over the past decade, it and suicide are major epidemics here. No one cares. Fled Bear, one of my very close friends, 52, perfect health, died of the same thing that I had. A rare cancer in his lower right mesentery. I had to add that just now. Died out of one hour from a rare cancer. Mike White, the piece of art working with the wrench on his eye and his face, died at 49 years old, drank himself to death. And of course, the most tragic death of all, Melina, 15 again. I tear up even writing about it. But then all lived as I lived, with passion and no fear. Death as far as an accident is tragic, but that is that an accident? Melita's young adolescent accident, others a self-indulge with a byproduct of a lot of things, including Niagara's rare cancer. Do you think those bombs in Nevada test site and radiation just stopped and drew up Kenny Line? That is what our government has determined. South of the line, they send their family a check. North, fuck you and your family. Ask our Democratic in the state, our only Democrat, a very good politician, respected man. His father, Scott Matheson, was, he was a downwinder. Our government in the early 80s, death regardless of age, one day older, 105 years old, is that death. The change in everyone's path in regard to their lifespan, by anyone directly or in the empowerment vote, money, ignorance, spin, is the purest of the evil. The altering of one's path and the family's and friend's path is the ultimate sin in my book, and this is my book. Make peace with your souls, all of you. To all your family members and all that have killed men and women in the Iraq and Afghanistan and Vietnam and Korea and the other evil wars, the so-called actions, including the killing of 40,000 men, your own, how evil, your own men in the Nevada test site, the Bikini Islands, how sexy is it now? I say to all of you, I do care and I do grieve and I do think of all of it every day. I, in my soul, know this is wrong. It is the byproduct of neo-ignorance. I live every day for all of them in my tiny, 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 tiny way. Like when Pat Tillman was murdered and his brother said, he is dead, he is dead. I do understand. I am not neo-ignorant, nor have I ever been. I have a soul. I have a cerebral cortex that has a conscious and a subconscious that I do respect. I am not a simple yellow sticker justifier and drag. Semper Fi to all of you. Semper Fi was a word of meaning long before there were any Marine Corps of the United States. For that matter, they are proud men who respect and honor. The Reigns, my father was one of them. The one principle I was taught as a young Mormon boy, a Christian boy in a devout Christian home by my grandmother's farmhouse, in the old wreck, brick sun colored across the palette, of the first and second generation perm made, made benches. All the theology I was taught, and I could quote Mormon theology before I could recite the Pledge of Allegiance and tell you the President of the United States was. I am not a follower of faith or a church goer, but a believer in one principle my brother would quote to me daily my entire life life is a test, and we all will be judged by someone or something and the yellow sticker denier with hairspray and makeup will not work. I watch that video a lot, the Goo Goo Dolls, so I could think of him when I hear that song I dream. Have I always dreamed my whole life? That's what I am, a dreamer. And I feel him and it breathes into my life. My spirit is not rooted in religion or politics or economics. It is rooted in knowledge and art. And the line that fits my life even more than that, may the landslide bring you down, or see the dog and butterfly, Fleetwood Mac, hard. It is a line that does make does it make you sad to know that life is more than who you are, Goo Goo Dolls? It does make me happy or sad, and it makes me get on that spot I've been on 11 years now. That one with the little cuts on Will Rogers' great-great-great-granddaughter.